Greetings everyone, it's Reed here, and thanks for hanging around for the crazy intro. And I hope you liked my intro, hope it had some dramatic appeal. Let me know what you think of the silly intro in the comment section. Now, I've, before we get started about explaining all this mess, I want to shout out someone, and his name is Fallen Sky Prepper. Link will be up here, you can check out, or maybe it's over here. One of the two spots, I never seem to get that right. But go check him out, he's a great gardener. Really interesting stuff, and I always like his sense of humor. So I do say go check out his channel. Anyways, let's get back onto this. All right, so what the heck is this thing? Well, it is an arc welder powered by lead acid deep cycle batteries. Well, you can also use car batteries or we can use motorcycle batteries. Basically, good lead acid batteries will drive this thing. Now I've got three 12 volt batteries. So we're running around 36, 38 volts. In fact, let's take a look what kind of voltage we got. There we go. Get up here. So we've got about 38 and a half volts. Good amount of power. Now the batteries are wired in series here, so that's how I get 38 volts out of these 12 volt batteries. So this one jumps to this one, which jumps to this one. I did it that way so I could have these two right here going into the welder power supply. All right. So here is one stuff like that, and this is the positive. Okay. And here's the negative. The black wire is the negative on this. Now the positive goes over here into a fuse. And this is a 400 amp fuse. I have a video where I was hooking this thing up and talking about it. And also a video showing about how these cables are made. I'll put a link up here or over here so you can go check that out if you haven't seen it and curious about it. And then it goes into a battery switch. Now this switch can handle up to 600 and something amps for a short period of time, like 400 continuous perfect for what I'm dealing on as welder because we're not going to go over that because the fuse will blow if we get too far up in the amperage range and shut everything down for safety's sake. I do like safety times. So if you want to call me the nickname Mr. Fuse, feel free. <laughs> now, here's our standard clamp. Okay, This is just a Hobart clamp and it's uh, I think a 500 amp clamp. I just picked it up at Traction Supply. When I went out to start this project, I'm like, ah, I'll just go over to Traction Supply. They probably got some of this. And we have a traction supply nearby, so I was able to go there and got the clamp. I also got the stick holder, or the electrode holder. Now, this is a screw type, so it actually locks down. And I actually really like this type. And I picked this up a traction supply as well. And I think it's like a 400 amp one or something. Yeah. Basically, you know, if I was over 300 amps, I wasn't worried about it. Now, the electrodes I found that work best when dealing with this right now is 5:30 seconds. I'm going to get them 3 16 inch electrodes, track supply didn't have any, and play with it. When I tried using, you know, a 3 seconds and a 1 8, it basically burned through the metal. I mean, I, I basically had a plasma torch for the 3 seconds electrode. I mean, I was cutting through things, not welding anything. So if I need to cut something, hey, I've got a way to do that too. <laughs> now the wire here is fine stranded copper uh, 2 gauge welding wire. I just ordered it off of eBay because they actually had really good prices. It's not UL list or anything, but good enough for what I was doing. Same thing with this wire, and same thing for the wire wrapped around this. Now, as you guys were probably seeing in the intro, wondering, uh, Reed, what, what in the hell are you doing? You're taking pipe nipples, taping them together, and wrapping a wire around it? What the heck, man? Okay, so one of the things that's interesting about this, and so this wire, right it has very low resistance and basically we hook that up and we go connect this start the weld well what happens is when you touch those things together you're effectively making a short circuit now the short circuit means that it's going to conduct based on the resistance of the wire it's the old rule V equals IR Ohm's law and we will get into that big time but don't worry about that right now basically Calculating out the resistance of this circuit, uh, this thing will happily dump like 2,000 amps into the circuit. That's too high. In fact, that will easily just blow the electrode to pieces and we won't have much in the way of actual work getting done. We need to limit the current and we need to control it very effectively. Okay, So we need a simple electrical component called an inductor. That's what this is. An inductor is a set of wires, or I mean a coil of wire, wrapped around 
a core. Now cores can be air cores, which aren't anything, but for what we need, we need a metal core. And I figured pipes would be easy to do. I just grabbed some pipe nipples, and as you saw, I taped them together and wrapped the wire around it. And these are, I think, foot long nipples or whatever, and such, and we've got several turns. Now there's a lots of equations like that governing inductors and how they're gonna behave in the circuit. I did not bother to calculate that. I had a pretty good hunch of what size I needed, about what would work, and what I was aiming for. So I took a wag, or as we like to say, wild ass guess. And I was right, or close enough, close enough to make it work just fine. So I don't care, close enough there. Now, what is the inductor doing? Well, when the current gets going here, okay, it has to build up a magnetic field around this. That takes some energy and all that, and we're limiting the current as it does that. Once the inductor reaches saturation point, then the current can just free flow. However, we are slowing down the flow of the current enough that once we do that first initial grab onto it where the spark goes and we cause the short circuit, the arc forms, and we get a plasma arc effectively. Now that arc, well, it takes a lot of resistance and power to run it. So it drops down the resistance of the circuit and we stabilize, I think around 200, 250 amps or so. Maybe as high as 300. I was trying to measure it, but my darn clamp meter just can't seem to measure it effectively because it's moving too quickly and it can't figure it out. Oh well. And I will have to get a shunt in here if I want to directly measure it. Anyways. Now the positive is here on the clamp and this is negative. The reason why is electrons actually flow from the negative to positive. So when this is molten, we want it to flow into the positive source, and that's what causes the weld. So what we have is called DC EP arc welding, or direct current earth positive. That's the setup on that. So that's pretty much it. I will put a recipe with all the information in the description. You can take a look, see all the parts, and you can build one of these yourselves. And like I said, you can get smaller batteries and stuff like that. Although with smaller batteries and their peak current and all that, you could probably use like 330 seconds of one inch wire. I'm gonna get three motorcycle batteries later and try it out to see what kind of alteration it does and what kind of welding it Now for big stuff and such, these three Group 29 marine grade deep cycle batteries, uh, they will power through it just fine. No problem at all. And I like this little setup I got. I'm gonna actually make some sides to it and sort of put a, like a carry handle so it'll be a, a case to carry it on. And if the motorcycle batteries work real well, we'll mount the motorcycle batteries on the back side of it and the wires will just fit in this little front compartment. So you'll see how it gets updated and all that. But I'm liking this. I like this a lot. I'm going to do a couple little alterations and things to make things a bit better the way I actually want. But for a prototype, I love how it works. So it's going to become a permanent fixture for all sorts of projects I got to go on. And I, I like it. Okay, I've got some 3 8 inch rebar. We're gonna set it up here on some wood blocks and stuff like that and little pieces I've cut together. And we're gonna weld it up and I'm gonna show you how it works. And we're gonna cut it in half and see what the penetration looks like. Hopefully it'll be really educational. Now let's make a weld here and show you guys what this thing does. And then we will cut this in half and take a look to see what kind of penetration level we got. Since I was in one of the live streams and people were poo-pooing this idea, I'm gonna show you this is not a bad idea. And this is actually a very effective welding system, especially if you got no other electricity, grids down, you gotta make things work. And I think it works pretty darn well, actually. Now, you can go ahead and laugh at some of my welding technique on this because uh, I am still learning and figuring out how to weld this way. It is a little different than anything else I've used before. Actually, it's very different. So I am still very much in the learning process. Well, anyways, let's get to work on that. Now one of the things that's really interesting about this welder is uh, I turn it on, it doesn't make any noise. <laughs> there's no hums, there's no fans, it's just ready to suddenly unleash a large pile of current. Alright, here we go. Alright, are you ready? Yep. Like I said, you can laugh. I oops this one. Gotta do part of it again. All right, everyone. We had 
have a weld and it actually looks decent i'm not gonna say amazing but pretty darn decent like i said i'm still freaking this out and i'm getting there just takes me a bit <laughs> now i think i'm gonna weld the back side okay and then we'll cut it in half to see what the penetrations look like and get a real good idea all right so one second we'll do another weld here and take a look at all of this pretty darn good um now I, like i said it's not perfect i don't have a stack of dimes here or anything like that uh, i gotta work on managing the puddle and handling this a bit better but practice will fix that and i actually really like this setup so i will probably use it quite a bit i like how portable it is and uh it is powerful i'm using a 5 30 seconds electrode which is pretty big uh and it has no trouble delivering the power needed to do this. I think I'm gonna get a 3 16 electrode and try those as well, and see what we do here. Uh, Cause it moves quick, really quick. Like I said, I'm having a little trouble managing the puddle a bit and I'd like to have something more looking like a stack of dimes right across. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So a bit more improvement and stuff like that, but let's take a look at penetration. Let me let this cool down for a bit though. Okay, so I broke off a bunch of the slag on both sides of this. Uh, I don't have it all the way off. But you can see the, let me get closer here, guys. Okay. So I broke off a bunch of the slag off of this. So you can see what the underlying metal looks like from the welding system. And it's good. It's actually quite good. I, Not as bad as I thought on my controls as I, as I thought I originally had. But still need to practice. Got to get a bit better. But I'm getting there. And I don't have the angle grinder out and stuff, so bear with me. It's just me. Breaking it off with a screwdriver. But you can see, you can see the point. All right, let's get this cut open and see what our penetration looks like. The weld was really hard, but for penetration, uh, it's good. Really, really good. I mean, that is a uniform piece of metal, pretty much. Look on this side, too. There you guys go. Uh, yeah, ain't, that stuff ain't coming apart. Not coming apart at all. So there's what the welds look like. As you saw, the weld we did was quite nice. We made really good penetration, and the piece actually looked like a uniform, solid piece of metal all the way through, which is outstanding. Exactly what we want. This thing can power through without any problems. I'm really happy. Now, if you're curious how to build one of these, got any questions about it, leave a comment. Ask questions in the comment section, and look in the description. The recipe for this thing will be there, so you can see how everything works. I hope you liked the little video, I hope you learned something, and I hope this gives you a good idea of something you can build so that you can weld even when the grid is down and all chaos is breaking loose. Because we're going to need to build stuff. Building and repairing things, very important. They have to even, you know, repair drive shafts, weld things together. Something we need. Take care everyone, this is Reed, out for now. Hey everyone, it's weed. Blah, 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 blah. Weed? It's weed, yes, it's weed. <laughs>